so pretty kitty this is my vlog where I talk about all the things I love about sewing and share my favorite patterns and makes with you guys um, so hi to my subscribers and welcome if you're new um, today I thought I would do a pattern review on the Joni dress uh, if unless you've been living in a cave you won't have heard of this book it's the new Tilly and the Buttons book stretch and it's really been quite popular, I think, amongst the sewing community. It's full of really nice, easy patterns um, to get you introduced to jersey knits. And I have made pretty much all the patterns except for the um, Stella hoodie, which is next on my list of things to make. So the Jenny dress is the last pattern in the book and I think it's the last one in the book because it is slightly trickier than the others. You have to use um, swimwear elastic and we'll come back to that later. But uh, I'll show you a picture. So this is one of the pictures in the book. There's several variations of this dress. It's a really beautiful, and the, here's the line drawing, really beautiful dress with a half circle skirt, an empire line at the waist and then this really interesting twist on the bodice which gives you really nice uh, shape and it's actually really flattering because uh, the skirt comes out sort of skims over your hips and it's really comfortable to wear obviously being made of jersey so I've made two of these dresses so far because I like this pattern so much and I can't promise there won't be more um, but to begin with I thought I'd talk through some of the issues I had whilst I was making this dress and um, any sort of ways of overcoming those problems and um, in case you guys want to make your own. So this Joni dress is made using some fabric that I bought from Franklin's um, fabric stall and um, it's about £12 a metre I think and really soft. Uh, I think it must have a little bit of viscose in it maybe because it's really soft and floaty and it has this huge tropical print, I'll just stand up, with cheese plant leaves and large flowers and it's all a navy blue background so as soon as I saw this fabric I just loved it. It was one of those occasions where I couldn't walk out the shop without buying some and I have to say I am so happy with the finished result. It's so comfy and so flattering. I'll insert a twirl in my previous video I talked a little bit about this dress so um, yeah here's a twirl so if I start with the cutting out you actually need about two 2.3 meters of fabric and it has to be at least 130 centimeters wide I think she says in the book because of the half circle skirt so the skirt pieces are the biggest widest pieces to fit onto your fabric um, for this dress, I really wanted to have a go at the flutter sleeve um, and Tilly actually includes a really fab tutorial in the book on how to achieve it and ha having never done it before, I'm really glad that um, I learnt a new skill. So it shows you in the book how to uh, slash and spread the pattern piece and then create this lovely sort of flutter sleeve effect which is just... Having made this sleeve and uh, a different type of sleeve, which I'll show you in my other journey, I think I much prefer this flutter sleeve. And it's all, you know, made the nicer by the fact that I learned how to draft a pattern piece, which is the first time I've ever done that. So sewing the dress itself can, um, the, the neckline I think is the trickiest part. And installing swimwear elastic, which, um, is probably now uh, my arch enemy, I have to say. I This dress it wasn't too bad, and I think it very much depends on the type of fabric that you're using. The swimwear elastic is uh, it's, it's kind of slippery. Um, Tilly suggests that you put a couple of tacking stitches at the beginning, because I overlock most of my jersey garments without using my sewing machine. Um, she suggests in the book to put a little few tacking stitches at the beginning so that you can sort of anchor the swimwear elastic before you start overlocking and my overlocker just chewed that thing up I mean there was swimwear elastic all over the place so um, I tried hand tacking it down and this fabric I think the shoulder I managed pretty much to get the swimwear elastic nicely into the 
one of the shoulders and probably only about halfway along the other shoulder because it kind of chews it as it goes along so um, you're trying to guide the fabric through the overlocker and at the same time guide the swimwear elastic on the top of the fabric and yeah like I said it is tricky so um, that's the first thing to think of really when you're making this dress. I'm not sure whether actually if I made another Joni I might substitute the swimwear elastic for something else like ribbon or uh, I don't even know whether actually ordinary elastic would work in the same way. Maybe you can put it in the comments below if you know the answer to that. But um, the elastic goes in the empire line uh, waist seam and also in the shoulder seams. Mm. And it's obviously there to prevent stretching out of the dress and you know the dress growing. Um, the other thing is the twist, although it looks complicated, that is actually quite easy to do. But what you have to do is um, put some stay stitching on the pieces. So you, it's hard to explain without you know um, showing you a, the piece cut out, but there are stay stitches that you have to place. And then when you've done the twisting and sewn the dress together, these stitches are visible. And I don't know if you can see actually on here, you can see a line of zigzag here, which I'm not really keen on. So on my purple version, which I'll show you in a minute, I've actually hand sewn the knot in place. So tucked, tucked all the, so those um, zigzag stitches under and then just hand sewn the knot so that it doesn't gape open. The other thing to know is that this seam here, if you don't get that really close to the knot, you'll end up with a hole underneath the knot. So it's kind of tricky to, and with that, instead of going straight for overlocking, I use my sewing machine first to stabilise that seam and then I overlocked it once I ha was happy that I've gotten it as close to that knot as possible because I didn't really want to have a hole right in the middle of the dress. The neckline itself, you use a, uh, it's almost like putting um, a neckband on actually, you just cut a, a, a thin strip of jersey and fold it in half and then use that to create sort of like this facing on the neckline so if you can see here um, there's actually a fold underneath there and in the book Tilly suggests you top stitch all the way around either with a zigzag or a twin needle and I didn't I didn't like the way it looked actually when I uh, started with a twin needle over here it just looks so obvious it's really hard on a dress that's multicolored anyway to choose the sort of colour thread that you're going to use um, and the fact that those stitches were visible all the way around the neckline I wasn't very keen on that so what I did do in the end was just do some blind hem stitching or just catch stitched with by hand all the way around with just tiny little stitches which you can't see on this version but actually on the purple version which I'll change into in a minute you can see where I've caught the fabric all the way along, but I still think it gives a neater finish. Um, I prefer the look of, you know, no stitching rather than have a, a zigzag or a top stitch around that neckline. But all in all, um, it's a fantastic pattern. It's well worth the time and effort that goes into making. Um, I have twin needled the hems around the bottom and around the sleeves and, and what I tend to do with twin needling because I know lots of people are sort of a um, bit frightened to use a twin needle what I tend to do is overlock the raw edge first then turn the hem up and then use the twin needle and I think that gives a really neat finish because you've already got the overlocking there you can't see the zigzag from the twin needle over the top of the overlocking and actually it makes it easier because you can feel from the right side of the fabric when you're sewing where that edge is so that you can catch the entire hem as you're going. So yeah, that's how I like to do it. Another top tip for twin needles is if you wind uh, another bobbin. So if you have two bobbins and uh, a reel of cotton 
ready, you can use um, a bobbin on top of the machine and your top thread together for the twin needle and then obviously have a bottom um, bobbin for your bottom thread. And that way you don't have to uh, worry about having two spools of thread the same colour. So yeah, um, I'll just go and change into my purple version. Okay, so this is the second Joni dress I made and you might recognise this fabric from my last video, uh, my birthday haul video. This was actually a remnant that I picked up in um, C&H Fabrics in Winchester and I only just had enough to sneak out a Joni dress and considering this fabric only cost me something like £5, I thought that was pretty good. But you'll see I had to go with a much tighter sleeve and... That was purely because I didn't have enough fabric to cut the flutter sleeves out of that. Um, I'm not as keen on this style of sleeve on this dress. I think the flutter sleeves add something really pretty and sort of balances the um, bodice off a bit nicer than these tight short sleeves do. Um, but you know, for a fiver, you can't really do you can't do better than that. Uh, this fabric, however, was an absolute pain to sew with. It's really slinky, very sheer, um, slippery jersey, and trying to get that swimwear elastic in these seams. Well, let's just say this, this dress nearly ended up in the bin. Um, it was difficult. So very much take into account, if you're going to make this pattern up, take into account the type of jersey that you use. Slightly heavier weight jersey is going to be easier to sew with than a really lightweight slinky jersey. Also, um, the fabric itself is sheer, like I said, so unless I wear nude underwear, I think I'm not going to get away with wearing this dress much in the summer. Um, Having said that, it's a beautiful colour, I really love this purple colour. So uh, it's nice to make it uh, in a different style. So uh, the floral, I think, is my favourite because the pattern very much sort of lends itself to the style of the dress where this sort of block colour really shows up um, any issues you might have with the sewing of the garment. And like I said before, I um, did the same with the neckline that I did with the tropical print dress and just sort of tacked it down because I didn't like the look of the top stitching but you can actually see my hand stitches through this fabric because it's so flimsy. So I'm not so keen on that. The twist I have sewn in place on this dress so you can't see any of those stay stitches which um, I much prefer the look of that, it's a much cleaner finish. and. Um, yeah, there's not a great deal else to say about this dress. I don't think I'm going to stand up in it and show you. I might get my husband to film a twirl. I'm a bit worried that it might be so see-through I'd be showing you more than just the dress, if you know what I mean. So whether or not I wear this dress much, I'm undecided. Uh, as I put the swimmer elastic into this Empire line, it all went hideously wrong. Um, ruckled up, just would not wouldn't sew in so I ended up having to unpick that entire seam which was overlocked which was a heck of a job so there is actually no elastic in this seam here so this seam may well stretch out quite a bit and um, I sort of fell out of love with this dress after it caused me so many problems my sewing machine really hated zigzagging this jersey I found that with a couple of fabrics now that uh, my sewing machine just will not zigzag on it and I tried everything you know expensive thread I've changed the needle re-threaded the machine um, it will sew perfectly well a zigzag on other types of fabric but this particular fabric it just said no I'm not doing that and I received some awesome fabric today which I think I am going to make into a wrap dress because sometimes you fall out of love with a pattern after you've made it too many times and I don't want that to happen with the Joni. So I think I'm going to go for a wrap dress with this fabric but I'll just show you because it is absolutely beautiful. So this is a Jersey Lycra mix. It's on a grey background with beautiful pink roses and these really cute spots. And I just think this is 
fantastic. I can definitely see myself wearing a wrap dress in this material. So that is what I think I will plan for this. This fabric came from Luby Doo Fabrics, uh, which is actually a new shop to me. I hadn't heard of them before. Um, I will put all the um, links in the box below so that you can follow um, those links to get to the shop. But this is 95% uh, cotton and 5% lycra. So it feels beautifully soft, but it's got an amazing stretch and the recovery is awesome. So I think it's going to be really super fabric to make a dress out of. Um, Luby Doo Fabrics are offering 20% off this bank holiday weekend as well. So you just have to use the code HOLIDAY in capital letters uh, when you're checking out and you should get 20% off, which is awesome. I think this fabric is normally something like £12 a metre or £12.50 a metre. But um, yeah, definitely check them out. So hopefully when I do my next video I will have a nice new dress to show you and all the other bits and pieces that I included in my plans video. I hope you enjoyed my video today. Can I say video any more times? Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy watching my vlogs and press the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on the next video. Thanks so much everyone. Bye!